Captain Matthew Flinders. As a boy of 15, he read Robinson Crusoe and became a sailor. 25 years later, the day after the publication of his own book, A Voyage to Terra Australis, he died. In his book, he writes, Round the low head, there was some appearance of an opening. And at two o'clock, this excited so much hope that I ventured to bear away before the wind. And at four, we had passed low head and were steering up an inlet of more than a mile wide. Thus, on the 3rd of November, 1798, did Flinders describe his arrival here at Low Head on the north coast of Tasmania. A joyous occasion, for he had proved his theory that Van Diemen's land is separated from the mainland by a strait. It was but 37 years later that a pilot station was established at Flinders Landing Place and the handsome settlement of Low Head. They that go down to the sea in ships, that do business in great waters, they reel to and fro like a drunken man, and are at their wits' end. Those too who go down to the sea in sloops and whale boats are no strangers to the perils of the sea. On the Sunday and Thursday mornings, he writes, and on fine evenings, the drum and fife announce the forecastle to be the scene of dancing nor did I discourage other playful amusements which might occasionally be more to the taste of the sailors. He got on well with his men and they with him. Today, huge jet planes are bringing men from distant parts of the Commonwealth to Low Head for the unveiling of a bronze bust honouring Matthew Flinders the explorer. But 200 years ago, Matthew Flinders, the naturalist, was occupied by other birds. He records an enormous flock of sooty petrels, he judged the stream to be 80 yards deep and 300 yards wide, and he writes that it continued to pass over low head for an hour and a half. Almost two centuries have passed since Matthew Flinders arrived and departed in his frail boat. The coastline is just as bleak and treacherous now as it was then. But it was Flinders who measured and charted it and made it safe for those who followed after him. From low head to Ben Lomond, it was from here, in northern Tasmania, 140 years ago, that Batman planned his exploration of the Port Phillip district of the village now known as Melbourne. Now privately owned, Batman's cottage is still of interest to Tasmanians and visitors alike. It was, in fact, a focal point of the recent commemoration of the founding of Melbourne by John Batman between the 2nd and 8th of June, 1835. In its sixth year, the annual reenactment was instigated as a reminder of the events leading to the founding of Melbourne to honour Batman and to emphasise the strong links between Launceston and Melbourne. Much talk of Batman's plans and subsequent voyage was heard at the Cornwall Arms Hotel built by John Pascoe Faulkner in 1824. John Batman drank often and too much at the Cornwall with straitsmen who could talk about the island and the mainland out of Westernport. He, in turn, talked of his aspirations for settlement there. Another place important to John Batman was St. John's in Launceston, now 150 years old. In this church, he married Elizabeth Thompson in March 1828. In honour of this union, a special service was held in St. John's Church as part of the Batman Treaty reenactment. Period costumes were worn for the occasion. The Batman group then travelled to Rosevears. It was here that the Rebecca, the small cutter which took Batman to Port Phillip, was built. Here the Rebecca sheltered from May the 11th to May the 19th, 1835. A special memorial now marks the site. an appropriate place to sign a Batman Charter to honour both the founder of Melbourne and continued links between Van Diemen's Land and Port Phillip.